Hey boss, I heard you want to be more productive in 2025 and you want to join me on CEO Mondays. So let's get into some CEO productivity that I live and swear by. So I, I created an entire lesson for you so we can embrace that CEO energy going into 2025. We're going to, I'm going to show you exactly how I love to get productive throughout the week. So that way I know I'm moving the needle inside my business every single day. I'm going to cover why you might be feeling unorganized or not able to focus. I'm going to be covering my PPE formula and my bad method. So you can start feeling productive AF time blocking your calendar. I'm going to do a Google tutorial on my Google calendar and setting up your CEO Monday for the week boss. Okay, let's get into it. So you might be telling yourself like, Hey, uh, Marissa, I'm not a naturally organized person. I have a system that works already, or I don't have the money to invest in like fancy systems and keep myself productive. Okay. I want to do this on a budget. I am not naturally organized. And guess what? Neither am I. You might think I'm organized, but I really am not. I just have systems that I lean on that I know that work for free. So if you're somebody who believes you're not naturally organized, that's okay. Neither am I. We're here together. We're going to do this together. Something you need to realize is you just, it's a lack of systems for time management. We didn't learn how to do time management in beauty school. We just got out of beauty school and then we got hit with these five job titles that we need to manage now that we're in our bridal business. And those five job titles are finances, sales, marketing, customer support, and appointments. Okay. Doing all of these without a structure or systems is going to lead to burnout, okay? So with finances, we need to be tracking our payments, our bookkeeping, our taxes every single month, year over year, okay? For sales, we need to be booking weddings, giving out quotes, doing calls with brides, sending out emails all the time in order to have sales. It's the lifeblood of our business, right? It's a very important job. Marketing, we always constantly need to be spreading it spreading the awareness of our business on social media so that we have more brides who want to work with us, right? And then we have the customer support side. So when they do become a bride of ours, we need to schedule out their trials. We need to create a morning timeline, let them know we're going to show up. We need to help support them with getting extensions or setting up their appointments for um, facials and things like that and helping them on that end. We have a lot of customer support. I know you feel me on that. And then we have the appointments. Like when we show up on the wedding day and when we have our trials. So we as a business owner have taken on these five job titles. So yeah, without a process, without managing your time correctly, you're going to feel unorganized. And I was there too until I started leaning on my systems. So here's some common mistakes we make as solopreneurs because that's what we are. We're solo. You know, you don't need to spend money on fancy systems for this. I promise. So maybe this is you. Are you multitasking? I am guilty. I multitask. I try all, all the time, even though I know it doesn't work. So you're trying to do three things at once since you work from home or you're doing your bridal business work at the office, right? Multitasking leads to major frustration and overwhelm. Why? Because of decision fatigue. Do you know we make 35,000 decisions a day, a day in our brain? I know I can't even comprehend it, right? And if we are making too many decisions and we're doing it all at once and compacting it all at one time, our brain is going to be so overwhelmed. Steve Jobs, the owner of Apple who passed away, um, sadly years ago, he never multitasked. He owned Apple. Why didn't he multitask? Cause he knew that in order to function at his highest, he needed to give all of his energy to one thing and not multiple. Okay. Maybe you're also repeating the same tasks all the time. You're constantly sending clients the same emails. You're constantly doing the how to book your PDF file, the pricing. This leads to exhaustion and burnout because you're constantly repeating the same thing over and over again. Every time a new bride comes into your system, right? Maybe you also don't have any schedule freedom, right? Believing that to have freedom on your terms, on your kind of a job, maybe you are somebody who left a salon. You are somebody who left a nine to five. Hand up. Me too. And you feel like I am not going to tie myself down to a schedule. I am not tying myself down to, I need to be at my desk and do work at this time of day, right? This leads to a lack of focus. Okay. 
this hit me so hard when I left my nine to five. I was like rebelling against that nine to five clock in clock out system being at my desk at this time. I was like, I'll do it whenever I want. But that led to, I had no idea what I was focusing on, right? It made my day chaotic, okay? I was always wondering what I should be working on because you have no clear direction of schedule. I had no schedule. So there, there, there was nothing to focus on. And this is what happens as a solopreneur because we don't know any other better way. We use the same amount of brain power on big tasks, on big and small decisions. In order to be more productive, we actually need to do less. And it's so counterintuitive, but I promise you this is what works okay so another common mistake if this is you in the morning afternoon and evening in the morning maybe you're like I'm not doing that that nine to five schedule I'm not scheduling out my day right you don't want to do it I totally get it you're like and then your morning comes around and you're like okay what do I eat I'm gonna go on social media let me scroll oh actually I didn't email that client back oh what should I wear today do I have my kit ready for the weekend maybe I should do a little restock or there's things that I need to order goes back and scrolls more on social media what do I need to get done today for my business ah should I post on social media afternoon comes maybe you got to pick up your kids what should i eat for lunch your stomach is growling now you can't even think because you're so hungry you're like ah oh, do i need to run to target maybe i should do some laundry uh what time is my doctor's appointment tomorrow for my eye exam oh you know what i'm gonna go on oh that's so funny i'm gonna go on social media and you scroll some more then the evening rolls around you're totally exhausted you feel like you got nothing accomplished and your inbox is still full right? And because of trying to multitask, decision fatigue sets in and you are rotting on the couch. Um, yeah, I've been there. I have been there. We've all done it. So I want to share with you and I want you to adopt the billionaire mindset. This is why Steve Jobs always wore the same outfit. Actually, President Obama always wears the same outfit too. A lot of people who are millionaires, billionaires that are really high up CEOs typically wear the same thing every single day. So that way their brain doesn't need to make the decision of what do I need to wear today. That's actually why I started always wearing the same thing when I work weddings because it took and eliminated that brain space from me and made my mornings easier just by eliminating what do I wear today. So the more you can eliminate decisions you're making throughout the day, the more focused you are for the rest of your day and the more energy you can give to those tasks that are actually moving the needle in your business. Mark Cuban actually buys all of his household necessities in bulk once a year to eliminate those decisions of like, oh, I ran out of, I ran out of shampoo. I need to order more shampoo. He orders it all one year. I mean, to get to that status, please, um, I will take it. So this is what decision fatigue looks like at 1%. Most people give 1% of their energy to many small tasks throughout the day. So what to eat, what do I post on Instagram, what to wear, they seem very small, but you're thinking you're moving the needle and being productive by multitasking. So doing emails and walking the dog, eating dinner and social surfing, or me being at the gym and answering client emails, right? When in reality, you're only giving 1% of your energy to that actual business task. You're not fully focused on emailing with your clients. And this results in feeling unfocused, overwhelmed, not knowing what to do next within your business. You're constantly asking yourself, what do I do? What do I do? Now at 80%, if you give 80% of your energy to the most important tasks of the day, so like batching your Instagram content, you set a time in the day, turn your phone off, we're not scrolling anymore, right? You got into the flow, you've got into that flow state of mind where you bang out fab captions, where you have two reels ready to go. You, you get stuck on your schedule and decisions are eliminated, right? Nobody else is coming in to distract you during that time because your phone's off because maybe you're at a designated work area in your house, right? You're able to fully give your energy to batching social media content and your lead generation for getting bridal inquiries is done for the week. So now you can show up in other ways, right? You get the rest of the week off, right? And it probably didn't take you as long as you thought it would, right? Just by getting started. And now you feel so accomplished. All your energy was wasted, was used wisely, and you don't feel scatterbrained. You don't feel overwhelmed. So now let's talk about ways that you can stop decision fatigue with my PPE formula, which is plan, prioritize, and eliminate. So let's talk about how we can start 
planning. So remember, we have those five main job titles, finances, which is accounting, bookkeeping, taking payments, sales, which is getting wedding bookings, marketing, social media, your website, customer service support, emailing every single week, and actually servicing the appointment. So without a process, you're likely focusing on all of these as they pop up throughout the week, throughout the day, instead of planning your day, your week, your month, your quarter to start creating a process for each of these job titles, right? And instead of having it all come at you at once and dealing with it as it pops up, you're planning for it, right? So which of these jobs are daily tasks? Which of these can you do weekly and which of these can you do monthly? So if you pull up your current calendar here, these are all actually segmented throughout the year, if you think about it. So your wedding appointments that you're servicing behind the chair, you know, maybe you do work throughout the year, but they're typically heavier throughout like the spring as well as the summer and the fall, right? Your tax season is only in January. So you could start planning for tax season in January, right? And then engagement season when you're getting the most wedding inquiries and wedding bookings, doing a lot more admin. It's probably here as well as throughout the months here, right? So this is where we're breaking it up by quarters, by looking at your year, your year and what you have going on. So what I like to do is I took my, I made sure, and please, if there's one thing you take away from this, give yourself off days. If you don't have days off where you're not answering any emails from clients, where you're not servicing clients, and you're not giving it to your full self, I give you full permission. Give yourself days off, okay? I would always take Sundays and Mondays off. Those were just the days that I like to take off, still do it to this day. And then my admin days. So those were the days I was responding to client emails, I was doing anything behind the scenes in my business when I wasn't servicing clients. So I strictly kept my service days to three days a week. So that was my trial days and days that I was working weddings. So the days that I was working weddings and trials, trials would be held on Thursdays and Fridays if I wasn't working a wedding and then I went and did weddings on Fridays, Saturdays, sometimes Sundays I would do trials, sometimes like once a month. And then my admin days were Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So when I was able to plan to have the work done on these days, it eliminated so much decision fatigue. So instead of letting that day pass me by, never knowing what I need to do in the day, letting clients dictate my schedule of like, oh, well, I'm actually free on Wednesday, but you're like, oh, that's my admin day. I don't really want to leave the house. Don't really want to pack up and do a trial that day, right? Instead, we're planning tomorrow today. Where every single Sunday and Monday, you set your week up for success by planning ahead. You set yourself daily routines, weekly routines, so that way it's more predictable inside of your business and less chaos, chaos, and you're not rushing to get important things done, right? So prioritize your energy. Are you a morning or night person? Me, I'm a morning person, okay? If you have the most energy in the morning, plan to tackle your biggest and most important work in the morning, right? We're gonna start prioritizing where our energy is the most. If you're a nighttime person, make sure at the at the end of the day, you give yourself a few hours so you can prioritize those bigger tasks in your business that you wanna get done, right? So what's your biggest work task? Is it, are you rebuilding your website? Are you setting up a CRM? Is it content, right? Tackle that first so your energy isn't depleted by all your other little small decisions and tasks throughout the day that you have to get done, right? So if you save your biggest, most important task, that for the last, like doing a website rebuild or batching content or posting on Instagram, your energy is going to be so low and depleted by then that you're like, okay, yeah, I'd rather rot on the couch and catch up with my shows, right? I've been there, okay? Leaving you no desire or rushing through it and it's not intentional, it's not purposeful, it's not strategic and you likely could do it better, right? So this is where the prioritize comes in. So instead of having no structure for the business tasks throughout the day, focus on time blocking, which, oh, I love it so much. I can't wait to show it to you. So when, ask yourself, when do I feel most alert, aka ready to work? For me, it's when nobody else in my house is awake 
So my husband, love him to pieces. He has ADHD. So when he's awake, he, he wants to hang out. He wants to share his day with me. He wants to talk. He wants to do things. So I am not able to get as much work done if he's here or he's not working, right? So I make sure I love the morning. I am a morning girl, okay? I get up at 5 a.m., sometimes 4.30 if I have a heavier workload. And from around 5.15, 5.30 in the morning, till 11 a.m. is when I get all of my deep work done. All of my deep work done because I don't have any distractions. I'm not looking at my phone. I'm not posting on Instagram. I'm not hanging out with my husband. I'm not focusing on my dogs, okay? And ask yourself, do I get more or less stress or more or less done when I try to multitask? If you're trying to do multiple things at the time, like you're unloading the dishwasher and you're um, looking on Instagram to find inspiration for reels that you want to do, you're probably not giving all of your energy to either of those. And ask yourself, what am I doing already at certain times of the day, like clockwork? Like, are you always going to the gym at a certain time of day? Are you always, if you have kids, picking them up at the same time of day, um, eating at the same time throughout the day, right? And lastly, what's your energy like when you're doing these tasks? Is it distracted? Is it focused? Is it high or is it low, right? Where do you start to slow down throughout the day and where do you start to pick up? For me, I realize I'm distracted and low energy when I try to multitask. So like doing emails at the gym, I tried it. I really wanted to be able to do it. I would be doing my hot girl walks and I would be, I would be here answering my emails and then I'm like, oh my God. And then I'd start like getting super fast paced and I'm sweating and I can't really think straight and I'm like getting frustrated at the emails from brides and I'm like, I'm not giving them my best, okay? They are not getting my best in my emails when I'm doing it this way. I'm more focused in high energy before anything else in my day gets going, right? And my most important task is emails and emailing with brides, right? And making sure my energy is good and I'm high vibes when I'm communicating with them, right? So that's why I get up at 5 a.m., okay? This is because my brain hasn't had to make any hard decisions yet. So for example, I used to, when I very first started my bridal business, I would start working from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Now at that time, I had already, I've already thought of like, okay, I need to go to the gym. I need to shower after the gym. I need to make breakfast. I think I'm going to stop at the, uh, stop at Target after because I need body wash. You know, I already, already having like a checklist of things that I need to email my brides about or things that we chatted about at their trial. Right. Again, 35,000 decisions a day this girl makes. Okay. Your brain is constantly making small micro decisions that we don't even notice. And I went from decision fatigue, trying to force myself to get more done throughout the day, but my energy wasn't there. Okay. And it's so normal for your energy not to be there. Stop trying to force yourself after you've made all of these heavy decisions to try and get into deep focus work. Okay. It's not there and you're normal to feel so like, so, so like burnt out if you're trying to start your work day after you've already done so much. Okay. We are human. We are not robots. Okay. So here's what wasn't working for me. Not adding in breaks, post client emails to manage my stress. Okay. Um, what happens is when I don't add in a break post client emails, it just kind of lingers on me. Now as females, I fear that me particularly, actually, I'm just going to call myself out. I'm very emotional. Okay. My brides are like, I take everything personally. So if somebody's in my inbox telling me that at their trial, they weren't happy with it. Yeah. I could kind of let it roll off my shoulders, but I'm, I'm still going to be upset about it and it's going to linger on me. Right. So it's so much harder to get back into a flow state when my other important tasks need to get done. Right. So what I'm doing instead is answering emails right before my daily gym break, moving a muscle changes a thought. So instead of sitting in those stressful feelings of a bride being like, I'm adding on five more bridesmaids and I have to find another second stylist for this. I'm going to change my environment. I'm going to move a muscle and I'm going to get some of those feel good endorphins running some of that dopamine running. Right. And instead of sitting in those stressful feelings, I'm going to move away from my desk, take that break and feel five times more energized when I return. Okay. So this was really helpful for me. 
Another thing that wasn't working for me is not adding it into my calendar at a specific time. So weekly, daily tasks. If I don't set a time frame for something, I'll give myself the entire week to do a 20 minute task, right? And that's just what we do as humans. So for example, I know responding to client emails will take me around an hour, hour and a half tops, right? But I'll tell myself it'll take so much longer and I just don't have the time today, right? I just, I have so much else going on. I don't have the time today. So I'll push it to the bottom of my do-to list, right? So what ends up happening is clients aren't getting responses in a timely manner from me, right? Or I'm not, post, I'm not batching my content on Instagram and then I have to go and make a post all within the same day. It's creating chaos, right? And that's not what we want for 2025. So what I'm doing instead is one day a week, adding everything into my Google Calendar with a specific time frame to get it done. If it's not a specific time frame, I'll push it off, put it to the bottom of my to-do list and that's just not working for me. Another thing is having too much in one day on my calendar, like too many things, like being over generous with how much I think I can get done in one day. Um, I'm not superwoman, so I fear I can't get everything done. So for example, if I have to service bridal clients and students inside of my programs like Bridal Boss Academy, or I'm reworking a curriculum, or I'm getting a masterclass out, or I'm filming a YouTube video, I was adding in little pieces of each of those into one day. And this totally overwhelmed me and left me unable to stay on track for any of those because essentially I was like multitasking. So I would be going from one thing to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next. And it was just too much. It was too much in one day. So instead what I'm doing is keeping one priority for each day. So instead of hopping between servicing my bridal clients, servicing my students, working on Instagram content and editing in one day, I'm giving each day a singular focused effort. So that way I can give all my energy to one of those things. Okay. So now let me tell you about my favorite things. If you don't follow me on Instagram, what are you doing? But also I started doing CEO Mondays. I think I'm in like three months now. And the goal of CEO Mondays is to have less unmade decisions equals less anxiety, more decisions getting done to free up more of your time. Okay. So my goal with CEO Mondays is to schedule out all of your weekly tasks with a time frame. Okay. Know what's a priority and what's not reviewing your Instagram analytics weekly and monthly reviewing your business KPIs weekly and monthly. My bridal bosses know exactly what I'm talking about. Reviewing your financials weekly, monthly time blocking out your day to day because that's giving CEO energy. So what is time blocking? Time blocking is a productivity technique for personal time management. So it's where a period of time, typically a day or a week is divided into smaller segments or blocks for specific tasks or to do's. It integrates the function of a calendar with that of a to-do list. Okay. So it builds momentum for the rest of your day. So what I like to do is I like to break it up into four time block buckets. We have deep work, personal, social and low work, right? So I am basing my time block off of my energy levels throughout the day. So my deep work is where I'm going to have the most energy. And then my low work is where there are lower energy tasks where I don't have, where I've already made a lot of decisions and this one is not going to take that much, right? So with the deep work, it's breaking up big to do's into smaller chunks. The number one daily priority of your day is going to be in your deep work, right? Front load this at the beginning of your day. It has changed the game for me. Okay. So example, you want to implement a new Instagram content strategy. This would be your weekly deep work, right? So things that require high brain power, like writing captions, right? Being creative. Okay. Then your next bucket is personal. So this is personal things that you need to do daily, weekly errands, meals, routines, or anything to do personal that has to do with you, right? So for me, my daily personal routine is I go to the gym once a day. So that's also along with um, grocery shopping, doing that daily, things like that. So my meals are breakfast and lunch that I like to plan for in my calendar of like, yes, I put it in my calendar when I'm going to eat and when I'm going to the gym. Okay. Or if I have any errands to run, it's going to be time blocked in my calendar. The next block 
time block bucket is social. So for me, this is anything that's social media related, or if I was hopping on the call, hopping on the phone with a bride, or whenever I'm catching up with social media, so like responding to DMs, comments, anything conversation related for me, that's what my social bucket is. So scheduling meetings, client calls, posting on Instagram, responding to DMs or inside my communities. Then low work is going to be lower energy tasks to wrap up your work day. Okay. So example for me, a low energy task is editing content together, responding to client responses from earlier in the day and wrapping up my emails. Okay. So this is what your four time blocks can look like. So other examples of what you can put into these time blocks. So most important work tasks, you want to front load that wherever your energy is highest. Okay. Then have, I call it a me time block and then a social media block and then end of the day. So most important priority work first, client emails, probably maybe if you're like setting up your CRM, like the Posado or filling out your KPI scorecard, right? Which my bridal bosses know what I mean by that. Okay. Um, and then we have the me time block. So for me, going to the gym, running to target food shopping. That's what I like to do in my me time block, social media, content batching, editing, posting and engaging, responding to DMS. I'm going to do that in that block. And then end of the day is wrapping up the work day, responding to emails, responding to comments, DMs, set a time to end your day. My friend, it will be a game changer for you. Okay. So how do we do CEO Monday? I chose one day of the week where I have off. It's my off day, but I'm setting myself up for the rest of the week. I don't want to set up my work week on a day where I'm going into work, right? So if I was to do this on an admin day, I would already be making so many decisions, even though your CEO day will likely only take you 60 to 90 minutes to put everything together and you will feel like such a boss after. Um, it does take some brain power. Okay. It does because you're going to be scheduling out for the rest of the week and really looking at what you need to get done and prioritize. Okay. So what you're going to do, pick one day a week for me. It's Monday. If you want to join me on Mondays, let's do it together. Okay. Set aside 60 to 90 minutes to be at your laptop, write out all of your deliverables. So any daily, weekly tasks that you have, right? We're gonna categorize your tasks into your time block buckets, taking those deliverables and tasks, adding them into your calendar with a time frame, my friend, because what do we wanna do? We wanna have less unmade decisions for less anxiety, so more time to free up your brain, okay? So here's exactly what I do. I take a piece of paper, Here's an example of one of them. So I take a piece of paper and I write deliverables and I write to do's. So I write this out and then I'm going to put it in my calendar. So here's an example. So on the deliverable side, look at your week ahead. What do you need to deliver on? Write out all of your weekly and daily deliverables. So what are examples of those posting on Instagram four times a week? That's something you're delivering, right? Batching content, reworking your website, content strategy, write that out on one side of the piece of paper. Then the weekly to do's look your week ahead. What are repeating things that you do weekly, whether that's personal, whether that's for your business, right? Some of those are probably like responding to client emails, tracking your business KPIs, editing your Instagram content, responding to comments and DMS, write all of those out on a piece of paper. These are going to look different for everybody, but these are just what it might look like for your bridal business. Okay. And then we're going to put it into your calendar. Okay. So this is what an example of what my calendar looks like for one month. So I block everything out and I give everything a time frame, but I also create multiple calendars so I can keep myself organized. So for me, I had my bridal business as well as my different programs and different things that need my attention. Right. So what I like to do is to color block. I like aesthetics. Okay. Libra rising. I can't help it. Right. So I like to color block everything and let's do this together. So if you have a Google calendar is super easy, go into your Google calendar. So each one of these to create a different color and to time block with different colors, what I like to do is create another calendar. So I have one that is for like YouTube videos. I have ones for different programs. So for you, what that can look like is you can have a personal color and you can have a business color. So if you want to break them up like that. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to go over to, let me see. You're going to go here up. 
we're going to go to the settings. So here's all of your calendars. So if we go here, I'm going to go to settings and sharing, and we're going to set up and create more calendars. So all you would do is scroll down and where is it at? Add to calendar, create new calendar. So when you go to create new calendar, you would type in the name. This is what it's going to show up as. And then you can type a little description. Doesn't really matter. And then you'll hit create calendar. Once you do, it's going to show up down here. So see, I have Bridal Boss Academy, Bridal Hair Society, Bridal Printer Socials, Personal, as well as Daily Tasks, and then a Marissa Grace Artistry one. So when you do that, they're all going to show up at the bottom here. Now, how do we change the colors? Because that's my favorite part. So you're going to select these three little dots. So go to the options and here's all the colors. So if you go to this plus sign, you can create a custom color. So you have to put in a hex code. How are we going to get that, Marissa? We're going to go over to Google. You're going to type in whatever your brand name is or whatever your brand colors are and type in hex codes. So I just went over and did pink hex codes and you're going to go over to images. When you go over to images, you're going to click on the image. If you, whatever color you like, you're going to pick the color and you can see that it has a little hex code at the bottom. So just copy that, bring it over to your Google Calendar and hit save and it's gonna change the colors. So now once I am in, let me go to a blank week. I like to view it in the weekly versus the monthly. So if we go to the monthly, it just gives me a little bit more anxiety looking at the whole month and I like to see my day planned out. So I'm going to go back to the weekly. And so all you're going to do is when you're time blocking. So again, for me, I love to put all my high priority tasks. That's going to take a lot of brain space for me. So if I'm creating new lessons for my program or when it was when I was responding to emails from Rise, that was my number one priority task. So I would do that first thing in the morning. Yeah, I was responding to Rise at 5 a.m. I don't care. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I was in their inbox. Some of them were responding back to me. Um, that was kind of funny. But so you just go in here. So you're going to click in and then you're going to type in whatever it is. So whatever your deliverables and your to do's that you wrote out for the week. Now we're going to start mapping it out and giving a time frame for it. So in the beginning, give yourself a little extra time. After a week or two, you're going to understand like, oh, okay, I don't need that much time um, to make lunch or I don't need that much time to answer emails. What it's go You're going to feel insane realizing how short it actually takes you to get tasks done or how long. Some might take longer. Okay, so type in um, email, bride emails bride emails and then here's how you're going to choose the calendar so you're going to come down here and you're going to click the calendar and it's going to bring up all the different calendars so if you want to color block it just choose the color and it's going to pop up here so now you can either change it in here the time frame or you can just simply drag it down to the time frame however long you would like to do it Another thing I like to do with um, Google Calendar is if you go over to the side and you hit the tasks, you can get a notification on your phone if you have Google Calendar set up. So if you add a task such as like, let's just say something pops up as you're emailing brides and you want to send bride extension recommendations right? But you're going throughout your day, but you want to do this for tomorrow. So let's set it up for tomorrow and you can go to details. And what you can also do that I love is you can take this, ah, you can take your task and you can bring it onto your calendar. So you can bring it onto your calendar and you can move it all around. And what it's going to do is it's now going to send you a notification. Yes, yeah, so you can also do that here, but it's going to send you the notification. And another thing with the tasks that I like to do is you can overlay it on top of each other, which just looks a little more aesthetic and I like it. So you would go throughout your calendar 
and put everything in priority work, that deep focus work in the beginning of your day, or maybe that's the end of the day for you. And then I'm going to write out when I'm going to the gym, when I'm eating, when I need to run errands for at Target and all those things. And then my social media block is going to be at the end of the day. Anytime I'm editing a YouTube video, responding to comments and DMs is all going to be more at the bottom of my day. So I, I, lay out my entire Google calendar using the time block system. So let's get back into it. I hope you like that. Okay. So we've covered plan, prioritize. Now let's talk about eliminating some things so we can eliminate decision fatigue. What can we take off of our plate, right? What variables can we eliminate? I want you to narrow down the amount of decisions you need to make on a day-to-day -day basis so you can truly focus the best. So let's eliminate with my bad method. So what does that stand for? Batch, automate, and delegate, right? So this is for uh, badass entrepreneurs, okay? And that is you. So batch, this is more for beginners, advanced, skilled, right? Delegating is for a skilled pro as well as if you have the money to invest in delegating. And then there's automating, which you also will need some money for that as well. So let's get into them. So batching. What does batching look like? Batching looks like the purpose is to free up your time and preserve your energy. So you want to do this when you're repeating the same task over and over again, and you're expelling a lot of energy and it's leaving you feeling burnt out. So that would be like batching your content. So it's all done instead of having to take so much time out of one day to create one post. Now you have 30 posts where you spend five minutes posting it, right? So content planning with later plan only, organizing it on Airtable, Trello, or Monday. Those are just some different systems or auto delivery. So I love auto delivery on Amazon, getting your products auto delivered instead of constantly having to be like, Oh my God, I got to get that got to be glued hairspray. I just ran out again, or I got to get more bobby pins on Amazon. You can set it up on auto delivery. Thank me later. Okay. Love you so much. So if you're spending hours of time creating an Instagram post, doing product inventory, batch it. Okay. Batch it to one day a month. So that way you have everything done and you can get more done throughout your day. Automate. So the purpose is to free up your time from any manual work to take that off your plate. So when to do this is when you have a process in place for repetitive tasks that take a lot of work, right? So for example, you have a process in place for book brides and you're constantly sending out the same emails for trial appointments. You, you know, you have to send out the same emails to every single bride to get the information to create that wedding timeline, right? You should automate that, automate that, take it off your plate. So the email is going out to your bride and it's all working for you, right? So that's where your CRM is going to come into place. So that's invoicing contracts. Um, Dubsado is the one that I live and die by. A lot of people also like HoneyBook as well. Um, scheduling your, you could schedule your trials in there. You can automate all of your emails. It's amazing. Okay. Accounting, doing QuickBooks. I use wave apps. So it, um, it automates all of my bookkeeping throughout the month. So I link my accounts to my wave and then I also do delegate to a bookkeeper who does my books for me because I can't be the one I fear. Okay. Um, so that's an example of how you can automate. And then the last one is to delegate. So if there are things that are just not your zone of genius, delegate it out. Okay. So this is where you're freeing up your time by paying someone to delegate the task to. So you're taking it off of your plate and somebody else is doing it for you. So that's why I said this one, you're going to need money to invest for this one. So when you have the capital, a process in place, you can create a plug and play formula to get it off of your plate. Right? So for me, I do this with my bookkeeping. I have somebody else handle that. So some things that you can delegate is um, to get freelancers is somebody to do your website, to design it for you if you don't want to do that. Um, digital designers to do stuff for your Instagram, accountants, video editors for um, copywriting. So some websites you can use for that is Fiverr or Upwork. You can get digital designers um, as well. I use for bookkeeping, I use Wave apps. So if your business is bringing in 10K months, you have a proven process for converting leads as well as procedures for booking clients. And you know the kind of direction where you want your content to go. And you're really solid on a social media um, plan and process. Think about hiring a VA. 
Think about hiring someone to take the emails off of your plate, right? So you can solely focus on being the one who's doing the hair behind the chair, right? That's how we can work smarter, not harder. Now, when it comes to batching, automating, and delegating, let's talk about some mistakes as well as some best practices for you. So when it comes to batching, if you're not utilizing this, that's, that's the mistake I fear. Thinking that it takes too much time when in reality, it gives you your time back. So if you spend four hours batching your content for an entire month and now you're set up for 30 days, um, I, I think you got your time back, right? So set aside this first week of the month to batch all of your Instagram content for the month ahead. Buy five of your favorite work outfit ready, work outfits to have ready. So that way you're not wasting the brain space of like, what am I going to wear today? No, I buy the same things. I wear the same things all the time. Okay. Now, when it comes to automating, a mistake that I see is people aren't utilizing this because it's an investment. So any investment that you make into automating, you will get your time back, which is one of the most priceless resources you could ever have. So instead of you wasting your time on little tasks, that's wasting your brain power, right? When you could be automating it, okay? Using Dubsado, right? And investing into that. It's an investment in your business that's gonna give you a major ROI, okay? So some best practices is invest in a system to manage your brides, okay? Dubsado, Airtable for your content. I use that to manage my brides. Um, on my bridal dashboard as well. PayPal, Wave for my accounting. I invest in all that. Now, when it comes to delegating, some mistakes that I see is hiring team members too soon. So jumping from not having any proven systems, specifically when it comes to social media, but then you go out and you hire a social media manager. And now it's like 15 times the work because they are constantly asking you for things and now you have to manage that person, right? So if you're hiring someone because you don't want to do a task, I get it. And you can get to that place, but you want to have a process in place before you hire out, right? So ask yourself, can X, Y, Z be done without me and still be effective? It probably can. Okay. So instead of multitasking overload, no schedule equals no freedom. No, instead of repeating the same tasks all the time, plan your week, set yourself up for success. Tackle big tasks first to make the most of your energy, automate those repetitive tasks to eliminate the variables, have systems in place for your business to stay organized, set up a daily weekly schedule for yourself, for emails, for big projects, you know, hang out with me on CEO Mondays over on Instagram. I would love to hang out with you over there. Okay. So remember this routines and schedules don't take your freedom away. They're made to give us our time back. So in 2025, if you want to be productive AF, I really hope to see you on CEO Mondays and remembering that you're setting yourself up for success by creating a routine to build a habit and having a schedule in place. So with that, I love you so much. I'll see you in the next one.